and we're live. Thank you. Uh, good evening, folks. Uh, welcome to April 9th, 2024 Council meeting. Uh, I'd like us to begin by acknowledging that today we are gathered in Mi'kma'ki, the ancestral present and future territory of the Nyingma people. Today we gather with the intent followed by the living peace and friendship treaties with respect, cooperation, and coexistence. Uh, we, we have uh, most of us in council, in council chamber, we wish the mayor well. Uh, he's not able to join us today, and maybe he might be able to join us at some point. Uh, so I'd like to call the meeting to order. Uh, we have an agenda in front of us. Motion to approve. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> pardon me, Deputy Mayor, I'd move that we approve the agenda as submitted. Seconded by Council now on the question. All in favor? Agenda is approved. Minutes uh, review, uh, minutes of March 12, 2024. Move, move that we accept them as uh, circulated. Moved by Councillor Wilson. Seconded by Council Carver on the question. In favor? Minutes approved. Public input session. Uh, normally we uh, allot uh, 15 minutes uh, per time. There are folks in the gallery. I don't know whether you want to provide any input or, or you do presentations. Yes, presentations. My apologies. Um, I guess we don't have anybody else in the gallery to talk to us. Sure. It doesn't matter, oh, excuse me, yes. your uh, deputy mayor. That's okay. Um, do we allow input from uh, people online or are people required to be present in chambers for public input? I think we'd clarify that it's supposed to be for folks who are in the chambers. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. don't have an option for mm -hmm. folks Thank to you. do that. Well, it's usually an opportunity at the end yeah. of the meeting mm -hmm. for online. For, for online Thank folks you. to ask the question. Yeah, so folks at home who will have uh, an opportunity at the end of the meeting uh, or questions from folks at home, so we can knock them down and just type, type, sorry. Type, type them in, and we'll get we'll get your questions at the end of the meeting. Uh, for uh, presentations, uh, Deborah, Deborah, welcome. <laughs> Oh, of course. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome. I'll, I'll let you introduce yourself. And uh, uh, actually, I'll probably us. stand if you can tip that up. I, I prefer to stand Absolutely. if you don't mind. I sit a lot. Welcome. Anyway, uh, thank you, first of all, for letting me come tonight to speak to council. I'm Deb Featherby. I am the fundraiser for Runeberg County Wheels, and with me is Jerome Tanner, who is the chair of our board. I have presented documents, sent documents through to you. Um, I wanted to come in person, though, because I wanted to personalize the presentation. <laughs> Facts and figures and numbers and words are all lovely things, but you don't associate anything, anyone with them. And Runeberg County Wheels is about people, and about communities. Now, Lunenburg County Wheels started out in life as senior wheels in Bridgewater and provided transportation for seniors especially, but those with mobility issues as well. The board saw that there was a need, not just in the town of Bridgewater, but in the municipality, in the towns of Lunenburg and Mahone Bay, for people with disabilities or mobility issues, seniors who could no longer drive or were nervous about driving, but also for a lot of people who really couldn't afford to have a car. So the project grew and expanded. And we have just taken possession of two new vans, one which is parked outside. We still have the original van and original bus, although the bus is getting a little a little high maintenance these days. We have two more vans on the way. We have just this week started servicing the home bay and Bloomberg areas. The ridership is for all ages, all abilities. You don't have to be challenged mobility wise. Uh, if you want to go anywhere to do anything, you can call the number of county US. You can 
go shopping, you can go to medical appointments, you can go to your hairdressers, you can go to your, you know, best friend Ethel down the road, you can go to Lunenburg, you can go to Bridgewater, you can go to New Germany where I live because it's a happening place up there, you know, I tell you, it's a service that I use, that's how I got involved, I was in a car accident last summer, I still have concussions, so if I blank out, just I'll, I'll come back. Uh, couldn't drive, didn't have a car to drive because I was totally destroyed and called on a lot of friends and relatives to take me here, bring me things. And after a while, you really don't want to do that anymore because you're afraid you're going to answer a phone call if you do call them. And they've got lives of their own. And I had seen this brochure for Lunenburg County Wheels and thought, oh, we'll try that. It was wonderful. They came to my door, uh, recognized that I had no movement in my left side, uh, trying to carry, you know, a person, get in a vehicle. Driver was very solicitous, very helpful, helped me in, got me to my destination right to the door, came back when I asked to be picked up again, helped me back in and drove me right to my door again. So I used the service several times and I can't say enough good about it. And, you know, I did get my car back or a new car. Uh, mine never came back to life. And, you know, I like that independence. But I know many people in the rural areas, especially, especially seniors who are nervous about driving, especially in the wintertime. But they want their independence and freedom. They want to be able to come to my home bay because it's got some really neat shops, really neat, neat businesses here. But, you know, it's like, you know, call your daughter, call your son. You don't want to do that all the time. They've got lives. So if you can call up Lunenburg County Wheels and come to my home bay from Barris's Corner and go back home again for $15, that's cheaper, I think, than actually driving your car, probably. Mm -hmm. It allows people, anyone of any age, you know, a mother with a young child who doesn't have a vehicle wants to get down to the grocery store. Someone in my home bay needs to go to Bridgewater South Shore Regional for a test. You're not supposed to drive yourself there and back. What are they going to do? Somebody takes a day off work in order to take mom to the hospital for her appointment. Why not call them for county wheels? They'll pick her up. They'll look after her. The drivers are trained. They'll take her to her destination, pick her up when she's done, and bring her back home again. If she's in a wheelchair, no problem. All the vans, no vans, have the wheelchair lift, and away we go. If that person has an attendant who has to be with them, that person rides for free. If you have a service dog, the dog comes too. The drivers are trained to deal with all of these situations. They're wonderful, they're great people. Some of them are volunteers because they believe so much in having this transportation system. And I know I've lived in Lunenburg County for a long, long time now. And a lot of people have worked very hard to try to get a good transportation system going. And I think Lunenburg County Wheels has pretty well got it right. But with this expansion, being able to serve all of you, take you wherever you want to go, we can take you down to Richard's Beach if you want. We can take you, you know, you can come to my place for tea. I make great oat cakes, by the way. Mm -hmm. Just saying. Uh, we can take you anywhere for whatever reason you have. But it costs money. We keep the fares low. If somebody wants to just, you know, go somewhere within my home bay, going and coming back is going to cost them five dollars. That's a very reasonable rent. If you don't have any money to pay, you will never be refused a ride. United Way gives us a grant so that if anyone indicates that they are financially strapped, they will still get their drive to the food bank even. And that's what some people need to have a drive for because they don't have a car. They can't afford a taxi if there is a taxi available. Uh, even within Bridgewater, which has a great transit system, it can't go up and down every road every day. So there are people who are too far from a bus stop to really walk there and then, you know, carry those groceries home. So it's a very personal service. I think it has revolutionized some people's lives. It was a great boon to me. And, you know, I jumped at the chance to join the board because I thought I got to give back. This was so great. But like I say, that expansion costs money. There's nothing free anymore in the world, is there? 
Um, we now have paid drivers with this expansion. And even before the expansion, we needed to have a dispatcher because we've got calls coming in. Uh, now we're, you know, looking after, we're going to very soon be looking after six vehicles. And somebody has to be able to know where they are, where they can pick you up, what time, all of that sort of thing. So we have a dispatcher and we have an office manager. The board members, of course, we're all volunteers and we're happy to do that. But we have to have these vehicles inspected, insured, fueled, cleaned, new tires, uh, all of that sort of thing. The vehicles themselves cost over $100,000. I know, you're all going, oh, that hurts. But we've got some lovely grants from the federal and provincial governments, but the day-to-day -day maintenance is going to be up to us. So that's my job, is to find the money. And it's very exciting because I get to meet all kinds of great people and I get to explain to them why we want to personalize this, that you understand that this service is serving needs of people like me, people like you. You break your leg, how are you going to get to the hospital to have your, you know, cats taken off? You know, could happen, not that I wanted to. Uh, you could be in a car accident like I was, again, you don't want to do that, it's not fun. But there are so many needs out there, and as the economy gets tighter and tighter, and people have less disposable income that they can spend on a vehicle or spend getting somewhere, we can help with those people. We can help your community by bringing in people from Riverport, from, by bringing in people from Blockers, uh, because they want to come here to shop. You've got some great shops. You've got a grocery store. You've got hairdressers. You've got some unique boutiques. And I, I love to come home because I love to shop. Uh, and I love to eat. And it's got some great restaurants. You want those people to be able to come and enjoy that. And that's going to help your economy because I know every town is struggling. You've got so many dollars and many more places that want those dollars. But I'm hoping that you will be able to help us, that you will be able to provide us with some funds, and hopefully that will enable us to keep on going. Uh, we're, we're operating on a, on a thread at the moment. Uh, well, I shouldn't say that, we're okay. But we want to be able to keep doing this. We want to be able to keep the people in Lunaver County mobile, moving, seeing their friends, seeing their relatives, going to the kids, you know, after school, you know, soccer game or whatever it may be. We're here to provide that service and we really want to do it. And we really want to continue. But as I say, we have to keep these, these vehicles in tip top shape. We have to keep our drivers happy. So we've got to have the money to do that. Um, <clears throat> we have, you know, had some grants monies provided to us. Bridgewater has given us a little pot of money. And as I say, I hope that you will have the means to do so as well. Now, if you have any hard questions, that's why I brought John. <laughs> He's gonna answer them. Actually, I can give you some facts and figures. Our, um, this is fairly new to us because we've never had this many vehicles, of course. So this is conjecture, but our, our budget is looking at around $400,000 a year. Fares make up a very small part of that because we have to keep them low. Otherwise, the whole point of existing is gone. We want it to be accessible. So we rely on government grants. Modal is very generous with us, United Way. Um, the Social Hospital Auxiliary has given us a lovely grant because they recognize the need for people to get to the hospital from far-flung regions. I mean, if you're down Farmington Road, there's no service for anything down there. You've got to find a way to get to the hospital without having, you know, your son take the day off work. So, you know, this is this is why we exist, and this is why I wanted to come and personalize it. So you weren't just saying, they're spending that much on insurance. Oh my soul. Look at that, you know, look at that budget. Four hundred thousand dollars for us, four hundred and fourteen thousand dollars to be exact. Um, and of course our val our budget looks like it's balanced because this is what we're counting on to come in for grants. If it doesn't, then we have to look at how often we can offer the service and how far we can go with the service. And we don't want to even think about that, but it's the reality of life. And you know, 
the, this is the way it is these days. So I've made my pitch and I can say, hey, tough questions, you're on? Huh. Yeah, he's going to answer them for you. Well, so thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, you're quite welcome. welcome. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, I believe you guys are doing a wonderful job. Mm -hmm. I have a thank question you. online. Yes. Before I go to you, okay. Suzanne had a hand up for a long time. Uh, Councillor Lunas Croft. Oh, thank you very much. Um, good to see you, Deb, doing something besides Lions Club. Um, oh, yeah, I'm still doing that too. <laughs> um, um, I'm very involved with the Maritime Bus Project, so I'm, I'm quite aware of the transportation needs in, in rural Nova Scotia and particularly our area. I'm just, um, and um, this is a question and then if not a suggestion, um, to connect to the Maritime Bus at the 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 places where they pick up people. I don't know how early in the morning you would start your route, but would it um, start early enough to get people to uh, Lunenburg or Bridgewater or Mahone Bay at their at their flag stop to pick up people to go to Halifax? And also um, connecting to the Bridgewater transit system because getting to Bridgewater, and as you say, like moving around to different um, places, people can realize um, that they don't have to call you to go from um, point A to point B in Bridgewater because they could connect, I think, at the hospital, around the hospital anyway, um, to the to the transit and do other stops in Bridgewater. Now, for the, the last part of your question, the Lunenburg County Wheels will take them to whatever their destination is. So if they know that the Bridgewater Transit stops at this point, like at the Des Brisee Museum, we can drop them at the Des Brise Museum. As far as um, the time of day, and you can chime in here, Jerome, yeah. we're still learning as we go. We're still a work in progress and we're gonna get it right, hopefully. Uh, we do our research, but um, we are trying to be flexible to meet the needs of the people. And if you know, people need to be in Lunenburg for 7 a.m. or 7.30 a.m., then that's something that we can consider. We publish our hours, but nothing at this point is written in stone because we, you know, with this increased ridership and increased area, we are, you know, we're changing it up as we go along because we're trying to react to what the needs of our clientele are going to be. Jerome, do you want to? Well, yeah, just, just, uh, Hooking up with Maritime Bus, that uh, we actually have done that because uh, there, there was a pickup at the mall, and I I know because I, I drive as well, and I picked up clients to take to the, to the mall entrance to to hook up with the uh, with the Maritime Bus system. I'm not sure if they changed their hours or 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 anything, but if somebody will give us their hours uh, and suggestion of when they would like to travel there, we certainly can. Accommodated, I think. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Okay. Once again, I'll reiterate what Suzanne said. Nice to see you outside the Lions Club. <laughs> <laughs> My question was sort of along the lines of Suzanne's, and that was what your proposed hours of operation? I mean, can anybody call you day and night, or what you know, type of thing are you looking at? We have uh, the dispatcher in place. Um, Eight so, eight thirty to four. Yeah, well, basically, basically, our operation for driving is eight till twelve and one to five, mm -hmm. and that's right. That's how we're operating now, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we have a, a dispatcher that comes in a little earlier than, than that and goes home a little earlier, but he handles the phone. But uh, after five o'clock or after four thirty in the afternoon, you can't contact the office. Okay. Yeah. We do recommend for people that they pre-book. So if you know that your appointment is on April 22nd, you call as soon as you know that because, you know, we, we try and if we can match up the time so that if there are three people on the number 10 who all want to go to Bridgewater on the same day, it's very economical for us to be able to pick all three up and bring them into the town or bring them to my home bay or take my home bay people in for their medical appointments. You know, if everybody's getting their, uh, you know, flu shots, flu shots or COVID shots or whatever it may be, uh, 
you know, we can put eight people in one van mm -hmm. and take them all at one time. And we've all, you know, as I say, we're a work in progress. We aim to be flexible. So if people have suggestions for what will suit the home bay, we're certainly open to listening to them and working with the town councils, because you know your people in this town better than I do, as much as I shop here and eat here. Uh, you know, so we will react to that as quickly as we can to make it work for the town. And, and that's what our aim is. So. And then basically it's a work in progress for us. Yeah. Even though we're familiar, a lot of us have been with seeing the wheels prior to this, is, is now we're going we're going from two vehicles to six. Mm -hmm. And to schedule those, not only schedule them, but schedule them efficiently, it, it's, it's going to take some time. And uh, also, you know, some, at some point in time, we'd like to maybe do more hours, maybe do a Saturday or whatever. But right now we want to, Make sure that we can do Monday to Friday efficiently, and, and I just want to, because I've been I've been involved so long. I just wanted to add just a couple of little things that uh, Deborah has said, and one is that uh, in with Senior Wheels we operated for 32 years, and uh, basically uh, picking up as, as as Deborah has said uh, over 60 and the disabled, and uh, we really didn't get any government funding because they determined that we were operating a unique system and, and uh, so, so with a certain selection of, of, of clients. So when COVID came, we decided, well, this is, we, we can't continue to operate like this. And we thought that, well, maybe we should try to seek some government funding. So that's, so that's what happened is that uh, we, we basically decided that we would then change our mode of operation and pick up everybody, and that would make us eligible for provincial funding, which is which has been a savior for, for us and for us also the people that we serve. And uh, it's just, a, a, I think it's just a, a great service, and I think all of our clients really really like it. And uh, and with these vans uh, too, is that we we lucked in a little bit because uh, a couple of years ago they came, the federal government came up with a pro program. Uh, for rural transportation systems for, for capital funding. And uh, so now we have four, four new vans, brand new vans. It's worth, worth over 100,000 a piece. <laughs> and uh, it, it, they're just just a casting out, really. Mm -hmm. And that's great. Uh, Councillor Calvin, then Councillor Wilson, and then CEO. Thank you. And so it's fabulous to hear this story. I mean, it really is quite magical and miraculous because for so many years, Western Lunenburg County has been the only area in the entire province without a community transit system. So congratulations mm. for bringing us along. <laughs> it's fabulous. Well, um, I think so too. Yeah. And, uh, and so I have a question about um, territory. So the 250, $2.50 one way for Mahone Bay, it, uh, as I understand it, it's not just in the boundary of Mahone Bay, but it's sort of Mahone, greater Mahone yeah, Bay. Yeah, greater Mahone Bay, I think, what is it, a 6.8 kilometer radius around the, the core of the, the community. If I, if I could, could pass on, I'll have pass on that. Wonderful. Yeah. So, <laughs> so the, the Mahone Bay bubble will allow people from the surrounding yeah. area to come into town more yes. easily, which is a great bonus. Oh, absolutely. And that's, that, that would be the, the $5 flat yeah. rate. Right. Yeah. If there are two or three people in the yes. car at the same time, is it still the same rate? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And I have one more question. Um, we have a, a newly expanded nursing home mm. and with a whole bunch of new workers uh, mm -hmm. at the nursing home, some of whom um, are finding housing in Bridgewater mm -hmm. because it, it's hard to find housing here. It's hard well, to nobody wants to leave here. Right. So, so yeah. is, it, would, is it possible to set up regular trips? From Bridgewater to here to bring somebody who may be coming on a regular basis, for example, or from any place yeah. on a regular basis. That would be possible mm -hmm. because we just book it ahead. Right. Yeah. Well, exactly. And, and and we're aware of this. In fact, we're aware of in Lunenburg, they bought a motel in Lunenburg, the province did, and, and housing workers are there. So we've been putting our feelers to, to the hospital foundation and that, that we would like to take those people to, to work mm -hmm. if, if they don't have the means. And, 
And even if we have to adjust our schedule, yeah. we, we, we would do that. Right. Excellent. Great. That's what well done. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. You're a wonderful group to present you. Did you have a question? Uh, one question. I did. <laughs> two. Okay. Well, one, one is just a clarification. So you're you're not really a fixed route service. No. And you're not really a dial ride service. You're kind of a little bit of both. Is yes. that the way I yes. understand that? Yes. Well, yeah. congratulations. Yes. So we call ourselves door, door, door to door. Door to door. door. Yes. Yeah, I've been listening to these presentations for a dozen years, and this is the first one. Would have made any sense. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Made sense. Yeah. I'll put that on my resume. Yeah. And the other question I have is, how much? Yeah, do you want? want? Well, we would like ten thousand, but we understand and appreciate budgets are this big, ask is this big. Okay. And if you gave us fifty dollars, we would be very happy. But I'm hoping it would be a little bit more. Just okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. One, uh, one more over here, and one. Sure. Well, yeah, and I'll just comment on that. that, that we did get your request, so it, we're doing the budget starting this Thursday evening, so it will be in there. Um, the thing I was going to ask about was uh, previously I was a resident of Chester, mm -hmm. and because of that, I was able to swing something where we use the Chester community vehicle yes. to do tours in the community for residents. Mm -hmm. um, so we'd like to do a tour of the community for residents to look at municipal infrastructure from time to time. Mm -hmm. We put a stop to that because of COVID, but now we can do it again. Uh, is that something that maybe I could follow up with you folks about uh, an Absolutely. opportunity to promote the service while also Absolutely. getting a vehicle that can fit a few people? Yes, yeah. absolutely. We're, we're open for suggestions, for ideas, um, just call on us and, you know, we'll discuss it in board and, you know, these are very, the board is very forward looking, like, you know, that they saw that need. They could have continued with senior wheels on and on and on. It was a great service and it did a lot of good for a lot of people. But they looked around and saw there's a need out there in Farmington, down in Blue Rocks, down in Riverport, uh, First South. All these places need access to transportation. And this is what's become of Sydney Wheels. And I think it's a wonderful transition because we're still serving the needs of those seniors and we expand it and we so again, thank you very much for your time. Did you still have one? The last one? It was interesting looking at the the uh, the sheet for tomorrow for transportation. I looked at the one from my home bay, and we're transporting a, a lady here from the home bay into Christmas Memorial Hospital. And that's what we'd, we'd like to do. That's the kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I think we're that's, that's, that's mm -hmm. right. So, um, a, a suggestion, just a mm -hmm. quickie. If sure. you're, if you're, if you've got, if you have a ride booked from X to Y, mm -hmm. would you post it on on your um, Facebook? Say we we have a ride booked for this area. Come and you know, hop along. Yeah. I mean, just that's I'm, I'm throwing it out. You can don't have to talk about it. Yeah, yeah. that's a little difficult, and then, then we got it. So many vehicles to you know. yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it, it, you know, once we get once we're really good at what we do, uh, you know, that's a suggestion that you know we put in the back of our minds because we do want to have multiple people in the vehicles. Now it's nice if you know your aunt Jane gets to ride all by herself in that lovely van, yeah. but uh, it'd be even better if her, you know, Ethel and Fred came along too. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what we're aiming for. And and we do have your contact info if you wish. Yes. Yeah. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I, just, I just would like to pass a, a couple of points to you. And uh, these are some, 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 some more things. Uh, we have, uh, a, yeah, we have a we have a, a great uh, guy that does their uh, publicity for us, communications. And so he does a lot of this stuff. And I'm just like, we'll get it around. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. In this moment, did you see my message to the chat? The Hail Mary is the only thing I could think of left to do for David, but the three would have suggest. Oh, the meeting chat. It should be to, to your, whichever computer is logged in at there. Who am I? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, great. Excellent. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you very much, Deborah. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thanks for your
So I've, one. I've tried resending invites, but the only thing left is maybe you as host can upgrade mm -hmm. David from the attendee. So just and see yet, if that's something you can do. And yet, can you can put them in the office. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yep. Well, well, yeah. Mm -hmm. you can like, well, yeah. Here, I noticed we have a few uh, a few pieces of correspondence from Minister Laura. I'd move that we uh, file accept and uh, accept and file. We have a second up for that. File. Second. I, I do have a question. On the question? Um, the question um, is, what are the implications of the new Department of Emergency Management on the, our regional emergency management organization? Yeah, I think, you know, nobody knows at this point, but the province is rolling out information a little bit at the time. So there's a call set up for uh, mayors, wardens, and CAOs on Friday. And other than the press statement that everybody's seen, that's the only that's just the first information that I would have. So we'll we'll bring some back, okay. and I'm sure the other uh, mayors and CAOs is beyond that from the other units. And when we get to Remo, lots of people will have heard whatever message there is to be, to be heard. Keep us posted. Yes, we'll do. On the question, all in favor? Which is very simply fine. Uh, staff reports. It's a short one. <laughs> oh, it's a long one. Uh, well, it's a, it's a double one, I guess. <laughs> yeah, because there should be a short one, and we did update the first part, but I just left the whole rest of it in there for the meeting that was canceled, so yeah. everybody could see what, what we would have had. But as usual, I'll, I'll take any questions. And if not, we've got 10 more staff reports to get to. Uh, yeah. A lot of stars. Yeah, we're moving along. I guess yeah. if we don't add too many things, we should be able to get it down to a very low number by, <laughs> by the end of your term. That's the goal. Deputy Mayor, I move that we accept uh, the staff report to council for the 9th of April. We have a second for that. Seconded by Councillor now on the question. All in favor? Motion is carried. And then I just had a question, I think, for folks before we move on to 6.2 and the rest. There's, there's a lot of staff reports here that are basically asking for, for us to refer staff to budget. One of the requests I had for council was to think about, rather than us litigating everything, sort of we do double uh, litigation on a, on a piece, if we can just move them to, to budget, mm -hmm. it might be helpful. But if we have a question that I guess is for public interest, yes. we can. We can deal with that. We just I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds, Sounds good to me. Okay, six point two. Oh, oh. You, you want me to speak to? No, no, just, just a minute. That's oh. <laughs> six point two. Sorry, I didn't even realize that. Yeah, uh, so six point two is a pretty perfunctory kind of report here. You may even feel that you just saw this report two months ago. Yeah. Uh, but two months ago, what you did was you approved us to use the uh, information sharing agreement with the province. Now it's in place. Now we need to use it to actually have the list of electors. Mm -hmm. So the recommendations here is pretty self-explanatory. But if anyone has any questions, I can take them. Deputy Mayor, I'd move the council direct the returning officer to request access to and the use of the list of electors used in the most recent federal and provincial election as the basis for the development of the town's elector list for the 2024 election coming up in the fall. You have a second? Seconded by Councillor Carva. On the question, I have a question. Uh, just uh, so the mayor is sort of on the meeting. If you okay. go to the attendees tab and he just has his hand raised, I'm not sure how we can acknowledge the hand raised, but I just wanted to bring it to your attention. You can go in whichever order. But I can see him. Um, if you go into the participants, there's a attendees tab that is separate from the panelists tab. Uh -huh. We haven't been able to figure yeah. out how to get him to join okay. as a panelist, but um, he raised his hand. So, yeah. Mayor, you with us? Can you hear us? I don't think he can speak back. So I think the thing okay. would be, uh, David, if you could hear us and you want to put your question I, to I me by a, email. Or... To talk. So. Oh, yeah. okay, awesome. Oh, there we go. Great. All right, David, I think you're you're in, or at least uh, if you unmute yourself, we should be able to hear you now. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, I was just going to, my. I was just using the raise my hand to see if it would work as a way to vote in favor of the motion. So okay. good to know. Good to know. But if you can hear me, that's okay. 
Well, yeah, I'll be looking at at, at your hand raised when I'm doing motions. Thank you. Glad okay. you could join. Um, this is not necessarily related to the list, but uh, I thought it come to me about elections and leading up to elections. So when when we had our elections, uh, we had uh, the opportunity to do a, a panel conversation, a discussion about all the folks who were running for elections, which uh, Tim Neri and I organized. Mm -hmm. And for me, I felt that was a very good benefit to the community. And I was wondering whether council would be interested in putting up something like that. So that I, I'm, I'm finding that that there isn't that much engagement from at least from my maybe maybe narrow sphere of mm -hmm. folks around uh, uh, elections and who's who's running and all that kind of stuff and mm -hmm. wondering if you would be willing. I think uh, Tim Mary would be willing to do that as a community service to just provide something like that. So I was wondering whether council would be willing to reach out to him officially and say, "Well, can we do this for the town?" Um, if I may, um, Annette. St. Ange approached me about my thoughts on candidates night. Is that what you're talking yeah, about? Yes, that's, that's okay. And I got the impression that she, under the auspices of the chamber, was organizing. And I will say that is traditional. Yeah. In most communities, the chamber organizes yeah. the candidates. So, so I, I, but I, maybe it would be good for, um, okay. I guess it's Suzanne technically to go to go through our liaison. And yes. Suzanne, if you don't want to be the one to follow up, I certainly could. But Maybe somebody should officially reach out to the chamber to confirm that they yeah, are. Planning. I know that that did come up at a meeting, and that is in the works. That's okay. one of one of the um, projects that they want to do this year. Good to know. Thank you. Have you had the motion? Yeah. yeah the motion is on the table. It's on the question. Oh, that was a discussion on the question. Oh, question. Oh, yeah. Okay. Because about the election. Yeah. Yeah. It was about the election. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. In general. Yeah. So maybe. Chamber, if they decide to do this, could be touch with you and Jim to. Uh, yeah, now that I know there's something going on, I can, I can make the connection. So, on, on the question, all in favor, motion is carried. Nice. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, fishing dock, 6.3. Thank you. So, this one is a little bit, I guess, more unusual uh, in that council directed us to look at an option for a fishing pier, and I'll change it to a fishing dock now because really that's more realistically what's being proposed. A mm -hmm. uh, lot of good input from the uh, society in terms of the design and uh, local contractors in terms of pricing and things. So mm -hmm. it, it certainly uh, seems like very possible. Uh, that being said, the council has a lot of capital priorities to weigh in the course of the budget process. So I was recommending that this be uh, referred to the budget and then uh, we can look at it in the context of the whole capital budget very shortly. So that's the recommendation, but I haven't taken any questions. Yeah. Uh, Deputy Mayor, taking your advice on uh, not wanting to adjudicate this three times, uh, why don't we just move this along to the budget, budget process? So I'd move the council refer uh, the proposed allocation of $40,000 for the construction of a floating fishing dock at the town owned wharf to the 2024-2025 budget process. For consideration and debate. Second by Councillor Finney, seconded by Councillor Cava. On the question, all in favor? Aye. Motion is carried. Next on, I can do this live because I put the budget open right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, 6.4 expense, expense policy update. Great. So uh, when we talked about priority policies back in, uh, just I guess it was. What, January already, or no, February now, at policy and strategy, we said we were not necessarily going to update most of our financial policies unless we had time because of the many things the finance department is busy with over the next few months. But if there were some opportunistic things that needed doing, we would send them through and not worry about getting absolutely everything done. So this was one point Ashley wanted to raise. It's a new year and our expenses, uh, she's been seeing the claims come in and they're, they're tending to be more than this now because of the last few years of inflation. So she just wanted a housekeeping update. And then because she didn't write the policy, she realized there also was no definition of lunch and she wanted to add a definition of lunch. So those are the main things that are in there. Um, I think the only things that are in there, but if there's any questions, I'm happy to take them. Yes, uh, I do have a question. Um, is, is this, these are these amounts tied to the provincial amounts, provincial government amounts? No, they're not. No. I'm, I'm curious why not. 
Uh, that's a good question. I think there was a thought to that when we originally did this back in the day, but this time around, all we were doing was saying the numbers were a bit low and nobody said, well, what is the province is at right now? So can I, I can double I, check. I think I'm not wondering if it's worth thinking about making the policy that we will follow the government rates um, and add the definitions about what we think lunch period is. I mean, we just make it more straightforward so you don't have to keep on revisiting the amounts. We see so, if I can find the so I think, because like, of the pay. So I think that's logical, except that I think we often find that the provincial government rates are often well mm. out of date. Um, so considering the the materiality of this line item and the fact that the entire council expense for the calendar year is plus or minus seven or eight thousand dollars, I think, all in for everyone, including the mayor. Um, look, I, I think we're probably okay just adjudicating this based on our own uh, best council um, rather than expect that the province is going to have more insightful commentary than we would have. That's a no. Yes. So, am I right in assuming then? These are rates if you're over the lunch hour that are paid out without receipts. All of the claims for food are done without receipts unless you're claiming more than the premium amount. Okay. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So that's great. Anyway. That's what that's what brought the question up. You said most of them are coming in over that amount. So yeah. So if you're not bringing a receipt in, then you can claim twenty five. Uh, thirty-five dollars for lunch and so on and so forth. And we've got an increasing prevalence of people bringing their receipts because they're paying more than that. Yes. yes. And what yes. we didn't want is yes. we didn't want the office to have to be processing all those receipts. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Councillor Lone is prop, and then Councillor Wilson, and then Councillor Cava. Okay. Thank you. Um, I was I was just wondering, um, and I sent that in a note when before the last meeting was postponed, um, but. Uh, Sometimes you're when you're going to a conference or something, there's a gala type dinner or something that you're expected to attend and is important to attend, but it's way over like a thirty-five dollar ticket. Um, does is there accommodations for that? For you're not out of pocket all the time because, as you know, uh, you get nickel and dimed a lot when you're a <laughs> politician. So that uh, that is if, if I can address that. So that is when you're expected to do the receding thing. So like when it's something like that, if you do have to pay for it, it depends on the conference. But if you do have to pay for it out of pocket, that's where you would want to save your receipt because it is quite a bit more pricey. And really, those are the scenarios that we intended to be yeah. coming up as receivable meal expenses. When it's clearly going to be something unusual and large. Now that being said, if it's NSFM. Um, they'll usually build a town and they'll just put it on your registration fee. So in that case, you wouldn't be out of pocket or have to wait to, to be paid back. But that, I think only NSF does that. We don't have a motion yet, do we? No. So I'd like to move that Council Direct Staff update the schedule for the expense policy to reflect the updated per diem meal rates and lunch hours as per the above schedule. There was a second after the motion. Second after Council Kenny. In the question, so, so, so I am prepared to support this this motion uh, for this moment, but I really do believe that it would be more efficient to attach it our, our per diems to the um, Nova Scotia government rates. You know, that was that. I think Joe may be correct because I've, I've been looking while we're talking here. Well, they put the kilometer in Joe every year. I can't find anything more current than uh, travel policy twenty six point one which gives $8, $15, and $20. Exactly. I think it's even more out of date than our previous expense policy. And I'm sure that's yeah. not why, I mean, there's gotta be provincial yeah. employees bringing receipts or whatever they're doing to yeah. get around this, but so that's, the current uh, provincial that's the only one I so, can quickly okay. find. Yeah. I mean, so all of the expenses are, yes, are publicly yeah. posted. And I would say 99% of the, uh, of the uh, are receipted. So this is, the utilization of the per diems is very unusual and wouldn't be a normal common practice because why would you use the per diem when you have the benefit of a receipt? But in the absence of the receipt, here's your per diem. I think we're ready to vote yeah. on this. Okay. On the question, all in favor? Motion is carried. Thank you, folks. Um, next one is uh, 6.5 region burners. 
see you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. So uh, this was the one where we were directed to bring this information back in time for budget. And so primarily the focus here was just on establishing budget amount. But in the background to that, Eric has had some conversations with the local legion and we did want to report, um, you know, essentially we're mm -hmm. looking at a complicated way to assist with this, which really just has us replacing the hangers and giving permission and, uh, and, and the actual, or yeah, the hangers it's referred to as in here. And then the actual cost of the um, banners themselves and who goes on them and what information goes on them will be up to the legion to take care of. So uh, the recommendation here uh, is to refer allocation to budget. Councilor Wilson, so moved. Seconded. Seconded by Councilor Now. On the question, all in favor? Motion is carried. Thank you. Uh, next one is uh, 6.6, 2024 full season. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. So this is a, a big one. The council had directed us to go uh, look at the cost to get the pool up and running for 2024. And just for anyone uh, watching to recap when we had initiated the process to design, uh, to evaluate the, uh, the possibility of renovating or uh, building new with the pool. And it, it very quickly became apparent that building new would be necessary to achieve various accessibility objectives and other long-term objectives. Um, that obviously creates a, a scenario that's going to be a lot more work to, to accomplish in terms of fundraising and building a pool. There'll be plenty of more information to come on that. But in the meantime, knowing that it is not going to be forthcoming uh, within one or, or likely even two years, um, there is a need to explore the, the, the current pool continuing to operate uh, because a one season closure was contemplated. But any longer than that, if we're looking at likely longer than that, would probably be a, a real a blow to the community. So council asked for this, we, we went out, we got a, a quotation for it, and uh, we're recommending the council include this in the budget. So this is slightly different from the previous motions that said to refer it to the budget, uh, uh, to refer to the draft budget. This is to include it in the budget, and the difference there is to give the go ahead to the contractor uh, right away. So we're looking for a, a, a we're not going to come back and relitigate this through the budget process. This will be in the budget if this motion would pass. But I'm happy to take any questions. Yeah, and I guess the commentary is that we've already had conversations about this and twice, and this is just a way to bring it back to the table so we can make a decision. On. So, Councillor Now, Councillor Wilson. Yeah, and Councilor under Council. item zero one general requirements, eighty-seven thousand for design pro project management supervision. Uh, I think you're looking at a different report. This is on the. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, no, that's the fire hall. I mean, wrong one. How much for the fire hall? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's got got it's it's got it's got Except for you did that. It says G to the fire hall. Let's do it. Uh, <laughs> good number. Uh, so this is a... Council and now, and then Council yeah. yeah. I, I just want to make that motion. The Council include the allocation mm -hmm. of $160,000 yeah. for the maintenance of the current Mahome pool in the 2024 five, five budget and direct staff to proceed with the work as soon as possible with the intention of completing the work in time for this year's school season. Moved by Councillor Wilson, seconded by Councillor Carver. On the question, all in favor? Thank I'm you. Here. Motion started. Thank you, folks. Um, and and uh, uh, Councillor Lonis Proctor, the mayor, if I miss your vote and, and count it as A, just let me know if you're opposed to it. I'll, I might not see it. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, sure. 6.7 public works garage renovation. No, I'll ask the question. <laughs> here's, here's where you come in. Yeah. So uh, I'll just quickly yeah, preface just, it and yeah, then we'll get exactly. the question. Yeah. Uh, so, Council had also requested that before budget, we come back with a report on the um, proposed renovation of the old fire hall building to serve as the home of the public works department and the electrical utility and the host other town operated operations. And the request was that this be able to um, satisfy the needs uh, of, the, of the department and the building uh, for at least five years. And uh, really what the, what we're looking at here in, in terms of renovation is primarily about the use of the space. There's a, a lot in the report from our manager of uh, public works and transportation detailing why this is necessary and how he has kept the scope of the renovations to a minimum. 
So there will be parts of the building that will certainly not look like they were purpose built for a public works and utility space, but we won't use those parts and uh, at least in the immediate term and the parts that are being renovated will ensure the department has the, the use that they need to have out of the building. So that being said, I know it is a larger price tag than we like. We did a lot of back and forth with contractors. We feel this is a realistic price. Um, trust me, I asked Jonathan to give you a lower price, but he's not going to give you something he doesn't believe is the right recommendation. Um, so this is what we believe is the right recommendation to get the proper use out of the space, be able to demolish the old garage. And uh, it does include electrical. And you could say, oh, man, that's a lot of electrical. Plus side is it's in there. So it won't come as a $60,000 surprise when we start the work, which is what everybody has uh, has mm -hmm. regretted about the renovation of this building. So mm -hmm. the good news is I think it is a pretty complete quotation. The bad news is it's kind of pricey. So uh, yeah. have the only question I have is on that number one, the uh, project management side. So project management, we're hiring a management company. Um, no, this is just an estimate. So essentially companies usually get a, a percentage of the overall cost and then they say well based on this overall cost and the amount of time people be on site you're probably going to need to spend this much for you know the engineering and electrical engineering this much to have someone on site as a supervisor etc cetera, etc cetera. we're only looking to have one company involved to do the design the build the subcontract the we're not really looking to hire two companies for this work now we could we could do that we could hire a separate company to oversee the other company yeah. um, that hasn't been Jonathan's recommendation at this point so so this would be um, our best guess that within the quotation, somebody will put these various things, uh, you know, and it may be a place where they've had, you know, you're, you're obviously you're trying to make a profit on a bid like this. So there's profit built into these. So that, that may be a place where they've had the, the cost in order to get a bit of profit, but that's what we're yeah. expecting in terms of the. No, that was my main concern there with the project management, because I was thinking if we were hiring somebody like Vigilant, I certainly wouldn't be in favor of that, because to my own mind, they did a piss poor job at the final. Well, leaving that aside, in terms like of saying, that's, why company, I, that's the reason we I talked asked. a lot about having a project manager when we did this project, and we mm -hmm. talked a lot about regretting not having one. And I've talked a lot with Jonathan about how we approach that and should we have one. And he's very confident that with him here working with a contractor that is hired for his job, there won't be the challenges mm -hmm. that we ran into last time around. And I will say that town hall renovations were before Jonathan's time with the town and the previous manager of public works did take a really hands-off approach to that project. So, I, and he was being retiring as the project was happening. So it's no surprise, but um, so Jonathan's recommendation is we do just have one company and he'll work directly with them. But you know, obviously we can talk more about that. I think at the end of the day, the cost is probably not massively influenced by who's doing the work, but it would be higher with, one company looking over another company's shoulder. Mm -hmm. No, I'd say that was my main concern. That top line does seem tied. The rest of it, I'm fine with, but uh, is that right? That seemed to be higher than the top line. Yeah. And so, listen. Um, well, <laughs> I was disappointed with numbers that had six <laughs> digits in them, mm -hmm. but I have to say that this is a lot better than the million five we were looking at a year ago. Yeah. Uh, and it's a fairly comprehensive document, and I have every confidence that uh, that. The current staff can pull this off, and uh, I think it's it's well worth the money for five years apiece. You know, 50, 60, yeah. 000 bucks a year is yeah. about what I expected to pay anyway. Yeah. The opportunity cost. Yeah. This, is, yeah. this strikes me as really wise. Oh, yeah. Save support. Should I ask one more question? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Overhead doors. <laughs> are we buying new ones or are we going to be able to use the ones that are available for us? We're not going to be able to reuse those ones. Jonathan yeah. does feel they have residual value, so they'll be resold when the garage is demolished, but they just aren't the exact time that we need. Yeah. So, so from my perspective, we will get to mitigate this, so I, I'm not. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Do you need a motion? Yes, I need a motion. Oh. No, we have not. I got oh, well, I could ask that question now or in discussion. But my question is, is there uh, any mileage in putting into the motion that it, the theory is that it's for the next five years, for at least the next five years? Yeah. I mean, the motion just to refer yeah, like, to yeah. budget, budget, and yeah. once it's done, it's, it's done. So I guess the only value would be in terms of sort of uh, trying to speak to the conversation that will happen in the next couple of weeks. 
whoever's making the motion certainly could put that in, but it's you're you were all here, mm-hmm. and so that that'd really be the only relevance because once it's in the budget, it's in it's in the budget. It's in the so budget. This motion yeah. is not. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm happy to make that motion. Yes, we'll Council refer the proposed allocation of three hundred twenty thousand dollars for the renovation of the old fire hall for continued use of the building by the town uh, public works department to, for, for the twenty four twenty five budget process for consideration. Seconded. Seconded by Seconded. the mayor. Uh, just yeah. a couple of points. So we have a number of standing council approvals one of which was made by uh, Councillor Lonis Croft for the temporary use of the former fire hall to be the temporary uh, public works building. So I think as this unfolds in the next you know, two months, mm-hmm. we need some cleanup around the, that original motion, you know, tra- uh, moving that from a temporary to a more permanent location. And then we really need some kind of a council motion to say that the former fire hall is now the current public works yeah. building so we don't constantly keep referring it to so as long as kind of we bring uh, i'm a little um, i just think we need to wrap the original motion uh yeah. that used because we're going into two over a year now almost 18 months which is far more than temporary and just so we can just clean, clean, clean up, it up yeah. some of those standing motions. But other than that, I'm all for it. So I think, you know, that, that motion should be in order through the budget process. Yeah. And also what I would suggest the best place to really articulate the interconnections is with the press release on the budget. So it'd be a good opportunity to say, would this budget council has made the decision to permanently relocate the public works department? The, mm-hmm. you know, the, the, the former fire hall will be now will become the, the public works and utilities garage and will be demolishing the, Garage on Aberdeen, so we'll put that in the, the press release as well. When we, if if and when we get to the budget, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So unless okay. there's anything you want Jonathan to look at, you can send it to me. Otherwise, oh. I, you know, obviously, what I'm trying to do back. So on the question, all in favor? Motion is carried. Thank you, folks. Uh, the next one is uh, six point eight, Clearway Street. Shoulder, CEO. All right, so this one came up a bit unexpectedly, but it was good timing with the with the budget fast appro- approaching. So uh, we have had, as you probably all recall, uh, for a very long time, something on the books of the 10-year capital plan that said, uh, I think it was uh, Bicycle Nova Scotia recommendation number four or something like that. Uh, but what it referred to uh, was the fact that uh, Clearway Street has never really had a comprehensive solution for pedestrians and cyclists where the the uh, shoulder narrows to a very tight point above the school um, and you've got uh, a blind crest on the hill. And uh, so it recently came up by coincidence as a concern uh, for a baby school with respect to kids walking up and down the trail. And I said, well, we have this notional project that we have uh, long-term intention to consider However, to, to be honest, it's a, it's a large project. It may never happen. And it's one that if it were going to happen, would probably not happen for quite some time. So in the meantime, they said, well, what could we do? And really, the only thing we could do is, is uh, kind of the rural approach. But, the, you know, Woodstock Road is a rural road from there up, from the trail up, is, uh, is just having a wider shoulder. So at least pedestrians and cyclists have somewhere to go when a vehicle appears. Uh, there are a number of small uh, obstructions in the way on that section. So there's a, a couple of trees, a couple of po- posts. Um, uh, there's a, a little bit of retaining wall that is privately owned in association with the home there. Uh, but ultimately, you know, what, what we felt was that if council was inclined to consider it, uh, this budget would be more than sufficient to deal with those sort of unknowns. So it, it does have a fairly healthy kind of contingency buffer within that. And then uh, it would be essentially work that would need to be done if we did return to create an off-street trail or uh, sidewalk or anything in the future uh, would obviously first require a level shoulder. So um, this is a project that the, the, the school wanted me to bring forward for consideration. The, the proposed recommendation here is to refer it to the budget. That would give everyone more time to consider it and see it in the context of other projects. Happy to take any questions. Also so in looking at the photograph that was included with the report, so that's looking uphill towards mm-hmm. Clearnet. 
that right? Yes. Yeah. So, so the, the, the side of the road that we're talking about is the right side. That's what we're looking at the photograph. So is that where children and people are walking now, both directions on the right side of the road? I'm just wondering what happens to the concept of walking always on the left side of the road. Yeah, it's my understanding that they are. And it's because as you get towards the school, that is where the side, the only sidewalk on the street is. And it's also the side of the street that the school is on. So, you know, crossing the street, there's no crosswalk. So there's no sidewalk on the other side. So I don't think anybody tries to walk on the other side there. And the 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 Bicycle Nova Scotia recommendation took that into consideration. They're only recommending one side as well, but they were recommending a separated uh, trail that could serve for bicyclists as well as pedestrians, which I guess a shoulder does too, in as much as it's really kind of just an emergency solution to conflicts with motor vehicles. Um, I, I was puzzled when I read this about where these kids are going. Like, or is, is it just random traffic and they're going just to the trail to do whatever? Because <laughs> it struck me that the, the school property itself backs onto the trails. So there's already, there is access without going on to Clearway Street at all. I had a conversation with the school about that access point, and it was, it was clearly preferred that that, that that not be the way that kids were accessing the trail. But as to why, uh, we might need to have a little bit more conversation about the pros and cons. I guess one thing is if people are going in the direction of Long Hill Road or Blockhouse, uh, the, 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 where the school trail connection is kind of uh, on diagonal the other direction, so they probably wouldn't use it. Yeah. Right. As to why somebody would get on the trail to go in the direction of Long Hill Road or, or Blockhouse, I, I'm not sure. And the uh, other, we might be able to get more information from the school. The other piece of that question was, then if that's not acceptable, there is a side street right across from the school that goes right back to the trash for people who are going to Long Hill Road. And wouldn't that be a better solution? And, and one thing to consider there, and I'm just, just putting this out there, would be, should there be a pedestrian crossing to welcome okay. students? Because they're, yeah. To I, I, I think this is a bit of a, not a great idea. Mm. So I, I disagree. Okay. Because it, I, I think eventually, uh, having a shoulder there all the way up to actually the top, top of the hill, the junction there would be a good thing for safety, because there's certain kids who live, uh, what, what do you call it? Clear, clear land. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, who who walk to school and just whatever, wherever you can improve safety for them would make sense. Mm -hmm. Just because on the other side there isn't safety, we should at least on our side be able to do that. So, to some extent, I think it would be helpful if we're able to do it. Now I know budget wise, maybe it might, it might be a question whether there's mm -hmm. something we do now. But I think from 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 a safety perspective, kids do use it a lot. Now I think. Mm -hmm. Uh, largely now, uh, when they're doing their track season, and they'll be doing their in in the in the fall, they'll be doing uh, I think it's cross country. They use they take kids there up there quite a lot, and so I think that might be one of the concerns because because there's a lot of kids that are teachers are trying to shape up through that corridor. Uh, yeah. You know, I think I think we'll get into it, but. You know, I look back at the original Blue Root project, of which had quite a bit of due diligence behind the prioritizations on where those experts thought, you know, safety would be enhanced, which investments should get prioritized. And this was not identified in that plan, not to say it's not worthy, but like in the hierarchy of needs, we, and we've been talking about it for five years now, I believe, was the, the corridor between Main Street and Kinburn Street you know, enhanced um, safety features along Kinburn Street through to the ball, through to Jubilee Park and to the other side of town. So like these, all of these projects have virtues. Um, you know, we also talked about the Main Street, Pleasant Street intersection that we had a, we had an appropriation for until the final budget came in. So it's just like, if we, I'm all for putting this on the list. It's just I think we we made a lot of sacrifices last year on the prioritization and which which projects will rise to the top. And I think we'll have this conversation in a couple of days and we'll see where it ends up. So that's the lowest crop. And then oh. that's the OK, yeah, I was just going to um, I had my hand up, but they they have other schools in, you know, the cross country plays a big part in 
using the trail. Um, a lot of soccer is played there. Parents go for a walk while people are up playing soccer and, and different um, athletics. Um, but there are a lot, there is a large number of people who do want their children walking to school and often they have to because that's their what is their transportation and they are coming from the Clareland area and you know that hill has always been dangerous uh, I know they've taken a lot off the top um, since when I was a child so that um, to make the view planes better for the buses coming in and out but um, if you talk to anyone who lives on that street it's just a speedway most of the time even even when school is in <laughs> And we, we know that. And um, we also, you know, hear the traffic here, um, you know, that comes down that hill constantly at all hours of the day. I think it's something that is wise to consider. It's more affordable right now than, you know, the, the plans to go through the liquor store, which I think is a wonderful plan. And, you know, Jubilee Park there, too, as well. But I, I welcome more discussion on it. So are you willing to move the motion and then kick? I'll move. Uh, uh, yes, I will move the motion that okay. council refer the proposal allocation of eighty thousand dollars for the proposed widening of the road shoulder on Clareway Street to the two thousand twenty four twenty five budget process for consideration. You have a second and, and then the question. I'll, I'll second it. Okay. Um, but I would hope that in, in relation to Councillor Wilson's uh, points, that there'd be a bit more discussion with the school before we uh, actually discuss the <laughs> budget um, to find out more about the options. I'm, I'm curious about how many uh, kids are walking from Clearland um, and, and why the school wouldn't be interested in a, an access to the trail if that's where kids are going through, through the school property and also then the, the street across the road, which would access a different part of the trail. So, so are, we, are we asking the CEO to have a back and forth with the school around that? Um, if that's possible. Do you need no, a motion for that? No, I, I don't think I need a motion for that. I guess uh, we'll see what we can do. I, I know they had an interest tonight. They probably will watch this mm -hmm. and hopefully uh, be able to come back with something. Um, I will say it's just something I'm only aware of because uh, personally, but there is a daycare in Clearland also. Uh, the, the there's day a daycare. So I, I don't know to what extent the home, the uh, after school program kids are part of that traffic, mm -hmm. but that, that may be part of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. On the question, all in favor? Motion is carried. Thank you. Um, 6.9 proposed uh, MBCCLC memorandum. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. So uh, another one that was directed by council to come back ahead uh, of the budget process. And uh, in this case, particularly as concerns potential for um, development of the assessment of the potential for development of and subsequent development of the town's property on the corner of Hawthorne and Kinburn. Um, there's a lot of question about uh, to, to, to what extent the um, town would commit or, or should commit uh, to working with the uh, Mahone Bay Community Land Cooperative. And so staff did follow up to uh, essentially uh, craft an MOU with, with the cooperative that would be, uh, you know, the feeling was appropriate to the level of commitment the town uh, would, would be willing to undertake in order to facilitate bringing some CMHC funding to bear to investigate the property and uh, potentially future CMHC funding to support uh, additional steps towards potential development. So uh, that's what we've come up with here. Um, this is Council's uh, second time seeing a proposed memorandum because it was originally advanced with the presentation from the society back in February, but um, now in the context of soliciting funds from CMHC, uh, I would recommend uh, the council approve signing the memorandum. And uh, I will also note uh, with, with respect to negotiation around the possible CMHC funding, uh, if there's a desire to have any closed session conversation, we could defer this to after the closed session. So just 
uh, putting that out there. I, I don't think that's necessary, but if council felt it was necessary, then we could certainly do that as well. So just one question. So I see the memorandum here, so like that. I know this was brought back in a ways back, but so the fire hall that's attached to this is no longer in division, right? <laughs> so that's it, just only in there as a, uh, a background to the presentation that they gave. But the thing that's being recommended as a, a memorandum the doesn't make property. reference to that property. It, it yeah. makes reference explicitly to the two canon properties on the other side of the property. Yeah, no. And it's you know, most of the actual document is given over to that, but that's just because <laughs> I was reattaching their presentation for February. So what kind of financial implications? So there's no financial implication to the MOU. It does essentially set the stage to then go to CMHC and show um, that the cooperative and the town have reached a, a level of agreement that would support joint access to CMHC funding for initiatives such as the assessment, the environmental uh, geotechnical assessments that we've talked about before. What happens if, I'm, I'm sort of writing a scenario here, but what happens if we take this MOU to CMHC, I don't feel like I'm talking garbage here, but and to, to show the, our joint interest in developing land, but when, if we get an environmental set, assessment back that says that most of that property is okay, I for one would, would be, adamant about doing an RFP and opening the opening it up to proposals from the broader community. Does that put this MOU in jeopardy? Or are we talking out of both sides of our mouth here? So this MOU specifically just is about exploring opportunities for development and it doesn't make any commitment to um, giving the cooperative any particular uh, role thereafter. Um, obviously, this is to set up the possibility of funding if we have a subsequent agreement about funding and the funding is being granted, there's likely to be more of a level of commitment entailed and I'm happy to speak to that more in the closed session if, if desired. The, um, the PIDs that are noted in the report, when I think about that property, it's kind of all contiguous from the border of Hawthorne and Kinburn and kind of to, together say three acres or so, I think that entire corridor, the pits that we're talking about here that you have noted in the report, are they just the two back pits that are kind of towards the, the top of the hill versus right on Kimburn Street? Is that how you would describe them? Uh, I think they're, more, they're at least two or three pits. There's, there's only the two, it's, it's not quite split that way. It's from the street upwards is one. Okay. And then the other one is kind of a triangular portion um, between the trail and mm -hmm. where Hawthorne curves uh, kind of after the new fire station. So really they're contiguous. Everything on that side of Hawthorne, mm -hmm. uh, so whatever, whatever, side, whatever side that is of Hawthorne, mm -hmm. opposite the fire station, everything on that side is these two PIDs, every, everything that just belongs to and, and the And the study that we're seeking financial support um, to subsidize, is that required for all, for both PIDs or just, ju I was under the impression it was just the- Yeah, just that's, the, that's the, an interesting the point. I, I suppose it's, well, it's the larger of the two PIDs, it's the front one. Um, the one that fronts on the street is the one that would that would need that. Okay. Uh, but I, I'd have to go back to the geotechnical proposal. I think we were going to include at least one test pit on the other property just for the sake of completeness but mm -hmm. um the other property is it mostly is overgrown with trees like mm -hmm. that 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 triangular lot hasn't really been cleared in recent memory anyway mm -hmm. whereas the other part has been used and it's been used of it by the town over the years that's triggering the environmental assessment mm -hmm. so we'll say properties so for completion as you know but i think at the end of the day this could be two properties, could be one property, could be 10 properties, depending on what the town uh, decides to move forward for development. I guess cut, like cutting to the chase, in the absence of the, of the funding, I would think that this council, kind of reading the tea leaves, would, would defer any decisions around finding that entirely uh, out, of our, out of our back pockets, just because 
you know, we can wait. We can be patient. The, the land's not going anywhere. It can certainly wait until we have more financial wherewithal if we have to find 100% of it. If we sign this MOU and proceed with the benefits of that arrangement, it does accelerate the opportunity, the, the evaluation. And we'll, this council or a future council will know the information that we're all, we all need to know, but we'll, we might know it two or three years earlier. So I think there's a lot of virtue in that. So I guess my gut would say that we should proceed, you know, knowing that it doesn't commit us or a future council to anything, but, you know, having information is certainly worth the price. Yes or no? I'm still a little concerned about the way it reads in the responsible as a town that we have to explore opportunities for not-for-profit housing development on the following properties, which gives those two PIDs. So um, it almost seems like we are being committed to giving nonprofit housing the authority on those two PIDs by signing this in your I guess all I can say for that is we're we're committed to exploring opportunities. So if we said, you know, we're putting out an RFP and the RFP says in big letters, we will not accept any nonprofit. Like I, I think we'd no. have to we'd have to be out yes. of our way to not do it. Um, so I, I my interpretation of this is that there's no commitment over and above the exploration. Um, but that being said, I, I do believe that there's a kind of a notion there that the town would not be against uh, the, the not-for-profit housing development. And if, if councillors feel that they're, you know, seriously not willing to consider the not-for-profit housing development of that property, then I, I would not suggest that you support this memorandum. I, I think in good faith, if you're not even willing to consider it, it wouldn't make sense to support this memorandum. Sir. Large pressure, large chance. Yes, yeah, so it's absolutely possible to have more than one housing development on these properties, depending on the results of the environmental assessment. Well, so we'll yeah. sign that council I just want to make that motion that council approve the signing of the attached memorandum of understanding with the Mahone Bay Community Land Cooperative. Second. Second by Council Cobb. That was my hand. Okay. Um, uh, moved in and seconded on the question. All in favor? Motions from the mayor. Motions carried. Any opposed? <laughs> Did not see any. Thank you. Motions carried. Um, moving on to the next one. Uh, Six point one zero home program review. Thank you. Um, so I referenced a lot of these things being follow up from uh, the relatively recent past. This is a lot. Further back, I guess it will go, but uh, we launched a home program, the Heat Pump Options Made Easy program, uh, quite a few years ago now, um, early in this council's term, with the intention to assist people transitioning away from fossil fuels. Um, since that time, the council has also endorsed uh, a review being carried out to see where that program was successful, where it wasn't, where it could be expanded. Um, and that review uh, has been completed. I think it's an excellent document. It's a lot to digest, uh, but it points us to some really good, uh, I think, directions for the future. One of the biggest things is that the landscape in terms of federal subsidies and other players in that um, arena of home renovation uh, have changed a lot since the program launched. But I think the gap goes a long way to, or the report goes a long way to identifying gaps. Uh, that still exist and how the program might be retooled to address them. Uh, ultimately, this was, you know, a, a, an FCM financed uh, review uh, with the towns of Berwick, Mahomet, and Antigonish with the intention of then setting us up, because this is a requirement for eligibility, to go back to the FCM to get them to subsidize improvement of the program. So all the scenarios that are presented, there's a number of different ones. Um, I boiled them down to, okay, so if we took the most costly of these scenarios, understanding it will take some time to discuss with any connection Berwick, what we might actually seek to apply to the FCM for, um, that we would be able to put up the town's portion of that, even on the most expensive scenario contemplated for $12,500 a year for three years. Um, and I will say back four years ago when we initially, initially initiated the program, we said, well, at some point we'll do a review and we'll improve the program. And probably that improvement of the program will cost about $50,000 over a period of three or four years. And here we have uh, essentially that. So I'll say that was a, a pretty good prediction of where we were going to go. Um, this is a, a, a great opportunity to leverage external money. So it's a very small commitment, uh, relatively speaking, from the town to leverage 
um, a, a tremendous amount of resources, I think, for, for helping residents. And uh, it does take into account that um, uh, council again revisited this last fall when dealing with the increasing costs for home heating and concerns being raised by residents. And uh, potentially this program will go a long way in that regard. The biggest improvement that I want, I just want to know before uh, asking if any questions, the biggest improvement that's proposed, uh, I think, for the customer, uh, obviously it would be exceptional to have a wider range of products and everything else, but a lot of people did not qualify for the financing uh, under the old model. And I, and I was quite surprised by how many people didn't qualify. Uh, this, this proposal for improvement essentially creates a mechanism to help people who would not normally qualify for market financing to obtain financing in a, in a way that is really not uh, especially risky to the town. So the, the traditional scenario for municipalities, almost most of the ones in Nova Scotia um, that are looking to finance people who can't qualify for external financing, is that the municipality just puts up the money. And that's what Bridgewater does. And so if you're fortunate enough, uh, people do come through and, and they pay you back, great. But if they don't, it's the municipality that's risking not getting paid back. Um, this scenario envisions a slightly different model by which municipal funds are leveraged with FCM funds to further leverage private sector funds, which is something that's done more commonly out west. But the amount of money and the risk from the, to the town would be very minimal for the amount of money that would be made available to assist people in town who wouldn't normally qualify for these type of loans. So um, anyway, I have, I have any questions. There's so much in the report. Uh, and I will say the recommendation is the council approve joint application in order for then staff to be empowered to bring forward some type of subsequent um, design of, a rec of, a, of, a, of an application. If council feels that it's too soon to endorse that, I would ask that we consider the budget allocation Ultimately, um, I think the whole thing could be pushed off a year if absolutely necessary, because we don't really expect that in the time it takes to develop an application, put it to FCM and get it back and then go out to market and put this whole thing together, that the program will be relaunched, most likely not before next fiscal. But that being said, if we're going out to try to secure funding, having made a commitment of, uh, on our own is a good way to demonstrate that, uh, that we're, we're ready to do that. So. I do recommend that we include $12,500 for this in the budget, um, in the 2024-25 budget, but I'm happy to take questions and uh, certainly we can kind of modify this recommended motion on the fly if necessary. Well, first, let me say that I'm not as happy with 73 page reports as the CAO. <laughs> There's an executive summary. <laughs> Uh, the other piece is, I think it's fair to say that the home program to date is, has been largely a non-starter. I guess that's the play way of putting it. Um, it hasn't been very successful. But I'm, and as we sit here today, what I'm really wondering is, there seem to me, just by what I see on you know, various publications, on television, on the internet, et cetera, all kinds of federal and provincial programs out there promoting subsidize this and free that and they'll help you with this and wouldn't the town be better off to simply get ourselves prepared to be an information uh, an information uh, provider to help people sort their way through the various other programs that they can access rather than creating another one that may or may not be successful and if I can just speak to that, that was one of the three scenarios that was envisioned as possible recommendations. It was the cheapest one, mm -hmm. but it wasn't that cheap because it essentially still involved having someone who was going to kind of answer the phones and do the net networking connections and everything for the three towns. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I would still recommend that we approve an amount of money and we go as far as to apply to FCM to leverage that money for, for external funding, even mm -hmm. if at the end of the day we choose the smallest of the options I think that choice can be made with Anaganition Berwick in the next number of months. We'll pick whichever option we all feel is, is, is the one that is appropriate. And if that one is, let's just have a navigator, then I think we still want to share navigator and we'd still probably want 50% funding through FCM for that position. So, yeah. So I'm not precluding that that is the, the, the eventual decision. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I agree with the uh, the concern about the, the uptake. I mean, it, it, it's really been very small in Mahone Bay. And the numbers were 280, roughly, for the three municipalities. Uh, 
and I think that the uptake in Mahogan Bay was very, very tiny. <laughs> but despite that, I'm really happy to see that the the broader range of options uh, of it that might be available. But I am I'm still I'm puzzled about this twelve thousand five hundred dollars. So if we where does it go? Does it sit in escrow? I mean, if we're, if, we're, if nothing's going to happen for another twelve months or more. So my expectation is that if this is like any other budget item, if we don't need it, we won't spend it. So I wasn't thinking we're going to put it into reserve. I just essentially want to be able to show that we are committed to it. If we apply to FCM, that we've put up at least enough money for our share in the current year. Mm -hmm. um, and if we don't go anywhere with it, then we won't spend it and we won't include it again next year. Um, if, if the budget was looking razor thin, and you guys can all decide if you feel that it is, um, this is the sort of thing that can be jettisoned to, to make money available for something else. So I guess um, the way that I worded it, I just wanted to flip back to whether it was worded as a refer to budget, but it, the refer to budgets are usually still to be... It doesn't say refer to budget. Okay. No. So that may be one thing where um, we can just, just say change and include or replace include with and refer to budget if there's a concern that the 12500 might be better allocated elsewhere. I guess that would be my only. Is the, is this initiative fall with under the kind of the grow your load um, umbrella? Uh, well, it it does uh, in the sense that it traditionally we've put it there. I guess the only thing we've <clears throat> never um, contemplated was you know the electrical utility has funds that are not um, how, to, how to describe this so. In water, you have very clear delineation between rate based and other monies, mm -hmm. and uh, and that 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 should exist within the electrical utility as well. Um, so essentially, if the electrical utility has money, surplus money, um, that money is not uh, derived from rates. So we didn't go to the board and say we need to have twelve thousand five hundred dollars for this. But if we have $12,500 over and above what the board has said, based on the rates the board has approved, then the utility is allowed to spend $12,500 on this. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know when we next go for a, a rate application, if we put it in or not in, we don't really have to decide now because it's a new expense now. Um, but I think between now and when we go for rate application, we would decide um, this probably is not a rate-based cost. But it would still typically be a Spartan, utility cost. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's a distinct, it's a very fine distinction. Mm -hmm. But for anybody who's curious, who's paying for it, uh, the notion would be that the utility is yeah. paying for it, but the utility's rate payers are not paying for it. Uh huh. Fair enough. Yeah, that's what I know. I share the same concerns as Councillor Wilson that, uh, you know, do we really want to go this route? Because the governments are advertising, as far as heat pumps go, free mm -hmm. installation of heat pumps. So why would we put money into it if, or have people even borrow the money if we, they can go to the government and follow the pro process and get it for nothing? So maybe we should be uh, following that route. Yeah. I, guess, I just yeah. want to clarify, because I know it's a 73 page report and maybe not everybody's had a chance to review all of it, but uh, you know, there's <laughs> no scenario in which we would say, don't take the free federal money, here's some money, or we're going to hook you up with borrowing. It, it's it's well researched by Navigate that essentially there would be things that don't qualify for that. So the federal government, one, one example would be the federal government will say, uh, we'll, we'll lend you 0% interest, we'll lend you the money to put up a heat pump. But if you have to get a new electrical panel rewiring done to do that, we're not going to lend you that money. If you have to fix the outside of your house, to you know, we're not going to lend you that money. So those are out-of-pocket costs. So if you came to us, uh, if you called, and let's say we had this program in place the way it's been envisioned, and we did have supports over and above, and it wasn't just a navigator program, the person on the other end would say, so you can get the federal money, here's how. And over and above that, if it's going to cost you another $1,200 or whatever for that, you can borrow that through this mechanism. So, th so this is a way to, to, to help for somebody for whom those out-of-pocket costs would would be a barrier to accessing the free the free federal money. This would remove that barrier to access. And there's a number of different ways that this would be designed to do that. Now, ultimately, that's with the more um, value add models. The lowest level, which Councillor Wilson mentioned, 
would just be to say, you call in, you say, I don't know where to start. And somebody uh, knowledgeable would help to connect you to those resources that exist. Mm -hmm. so, so at that level, we're doing nothing other than helping people to find external federal and provincial resources, but somebody's still taking the time to help you. And, and that's really what I think at, at a minimum, um, the report is recommending that, that we would do that. So I'm not precluding that that's where we draw the line, like I said to Councillor Wilson, um, but even doing that would, would cost some money, but if it's going to cost any money, I'd rather get FCM so, so, to so, pay for half of it. Yeah. So, so, sorry, Deputy Mayor, I'm just, I guess, we have a climate and energy program manager. Um, we've had a line item similar to this for a number of years, and where it wasn't going to be utilized, the money wasn't spent. And my sense of things is that you're going to get a two or three or four times return from the subsidy in the fullness of time if you ever were going to draw down on the money. So if we spend the 12, my sense of things is we're probably going to receive 30 to $50,000 in further program subsidies to give you a bang for your buck. So in the sense of having and providing with Lawrence and with direct, some direction about her mandate, uh, of which we've had tremendous success from, um, from her output the last two and a half years, like I'd suggest that we, we allocate the funding with the knowledge that if if it doesn't get spent, it won't it won't go bad. We we it just won't get spent. But it but having that budget in codified will allow us to get the subsidized funding in due course and let her work her magic. I think we've we've received many 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 hundreds of thousands of dollars from her uh, her efforts over the last few years, and I think we should uh, keep that keep that running. So I, I'd move that we, um, Deputy Mayor, if you'd indulge me, I'd move the council approve the joint application for the feder to the Federation of Canadian Municipalities Community uh, Efficiency Financing Program. That's a mouthful. Uh, in, in, with Berwick and Andy Ganesh, and include twelve thousand five hundred dollars for um, the home program in the draft budget for 2024-2025. We have a second. Seconded. Seconded by the mayor. On the question, all in favor? Opposed? Motion is carried. Thank you. One more to go. Yeah, privacy 6.11, privacy mm -hmm. and data uh, shared service. So uh, I will try not to take too long to go back through the history of this. We were all there. Mm -hmm. uh, but before Christmas, we received a recommendation from the Municipal Joint Services Board to endorse a new service, a new shared service, privacy and data security, which would have begun in Q1 of 24-25. Uh, however, when they went around through all the units and Town of Homebay said yes, and Town of Ridgewater said yes, MODL had reservations, which were expressed back to the board. Subsequently, we got another report from the board saying, um, what are we gonna do? And uh, it was suggested that we should have a discussion before most likely saying no. So I've, I've come back and I've kind of put that in context. I think we're saying, We'll take a, a half step. We'll be ready uh, if we're if we're going to have the opportunity to join a shared service in the future. But I would not recommend that it's even really worth yeah. investigating a shared service Absolutely. without MODL yeah. at this time. So my recommendation is included. I have to take any questions. Councilor Cava. I move the council direct staff to write to the MJSB informing them that the town of Mahone Bay declines to proceed with the privacy and data security as a shared service at this time but looks forward to the opportunity to do so in the future with all MJSB partners participating. Moved by Councillor Cover, seconded by Councillor Now. On the question, all in favor? Motion is carried. Thank you. Okay, well, not to say that the rest of the agenda is easy, but thanks everyone for taking the time to slog through 11 staff reports. Yeah, it yeah, was very good, appreciate it. We don't have any council items, so moving on to 8.1 minutes of the Climate and Environment Advisory Committee. Yes, um, there's one recommendation coming out of that committee. Um, sorry, just trying to find it. Oh, it's a little bit out there. Um, the, the, com the committee uh, had a sub subgroup that was working very hard to develop a community engagement um, procedure. 
really uh, address to bringing the whole community along and participating in uh, working with adaptation uh, around climate change. And they have presented a proposal called Embark, Mahon Bay, an adaptive and resilient community. And they have asked council to approve the Embark engagement plan schedule and budget that was attached in the, in the minutes. So I am going to make that motion that council approve the Embark engagement plan schedule and budget. It's attached. You have a second? Oh, I'm not I'm seconding, but I'll just make a note that I was not involved with that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. tomorrow, tomorrow morning, we'll like correct the vote of the I'll second it. I got your back. I, I am not also not on the committee. However, I will second the motion. I just want to clarify Richard's point is because I referenced him in the minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Just a yeah. <laughs> so moved by Councilor Carlo, seconded by Councilor Pini. Dylan's always good for now. On um, the question. So I just wanted to say in discussion, I, I, I wanted to specify that I feel that the committee members gave a lot of consideration to Council's public engagement policy and really crafted this recommendation in a way that reflected that policy. And so as an exercise, um, to me, this is how we want a committee to formulate their recommendations to Council. So I, I just wanted to say, I think mm -hmm. a lot of consideration was given to making this an accessible as, as large as the topic is, something council could bite off in, in line with what we've asked from, from the committees. So. Yeah, my only comment would be, uh, I, I thought in healthcare we have acronyms. <laughs> and yeah. then that, reading that report, I was like, yeah, yeah. The, the, we, we need to get to a place where it can be for, for the lay user that, <clears throat> because you get really lost when acronyms go by. And so I've read it up there. And so I'm trying to find out, so what does, CEA something mean. And so mm -hmm. if they can find ways to actually just okay. use the entire wording might be really helpful. Anyways, on the question, uh, so on that. Just one question there. I didn't see it in the documents, but we're approving the budget. But is there a budget tax there? I didn't yes, see it. Uh, $2, yeah. $2, $2. At hmm? the end. All at the bottom. Oh, 2000. Okay. I, yeah. I missed that somehow. Okay. I just wanted to be sure it was something there. So yeah. they were approving. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. It's so, 2000. Yeah. yeah that's With that said, on the question, all in favor? Motion is carried. Thank you. Uh, Heritage Advisory Committee. Uh, two items, Deputy Mayor. Um, that was March 13th, I believe. Uh, we had a motion uh, and a recommendation from the, from the committee to council. Um, to support the HAC hosting an educational event in May with a speaker um, that Kelly has uh, reached out to uh, from the Heritage Trust of Nova Scotia to take place in the community room at the fire station. Um, and essentially, they were just uh, looking for support from council uh, for a, a drawdown of, I believe, $500 uh, out of the HAC's um, committee budget associated with that uh, that uh, event. Yes. So there's a motion to that effect. I appreciate a seconder. Seconder. Moved by Councillor Pini, seconded by Councillor Cargo. On the question. Yeah. Uh, May, it's uh, May 15th now? It's it? still, the date is still under negotiation, yeah. but tentatively May. Okay. Yeah, we were trying to rub. I'm make, just concerned about it. Yeah, interfering with anything yeah. else going on. It was. Uh, we just didn't want to have it uh, run into the NF, uh, NSFM um, uh, conference. Um, the second thing, I guess, is in the. We, we, we have a motion. Yeah. Sorry. On the question, all in favor? Motion's carried. With the theme of um, kind of cleaning up loose ends um, before the end of the term, um, there are few outstanding um, situations with regard to the heritage property registration process. Um, so kind of cutting to the chase, uh, the committee recommends and uh, uh, a motion, which I'm prepared to make today, 
that uh, council directs staff to offer the to offer the opportunity for the owners of 624 Main Street and 38 School Street to complete the heritage res uh, property registration process. And if those property owners decline to proceed, fair enough, um, staff is then directed to remove the heritage property plaques from the buildings. Do a second of that? Seconded by Council Cava. On the question, discussion. Oh, for me, I was just curious. Um, we have the powers to do that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So the the plaques continue to be owned by the towns. By the towns. Um, it's just if you uh, we're, we're we're certainly hopeful that everyone will uh, desire to complete the program, uh, complete the process. But if there's not a no support to complete the process, then um, can't have the benefits of the of the program without being a participant. Do we know why why the plaques were put on if the process wasn't completed? <laughs> um, yes, we do know why, um, but it's a long and winding road. That fair okay. uh, fair to say that there were a number of um, there were a number of of uh, houses that participated in the program um, where the, the final legal part components of the process were not consummated. And we've had subsequent people move and new owners come in and people have different opinions. So okay. these are a few uh, loose ends. Um, there were, I think, council covers many as seven loose ends. At the beginning of the term, I think we're down to the final two. So this is going to resolve any outstanding um, issues. Uh, What's the next the experience with the other ones? Uh, everybody's proceeded, yeah, center. and we finished them all off, including the town hall and yeah. Mohon Base Center and and, uh, and other and other buildings. Great. Uh, on the question, all in favor? Motion is carried. Thank you. You have anything else on that? I think we're okay on that we're, one. We're down on that one. Okay. We're going on to the next one. What is it, committee? Yeah, we have one. Uh, recommendation from our committee meeting. Uh, we had a long discussion on the uh, we have a request for easement across the trail properties so that to provide access from one part of this property to the other on the lake side. So uh, we as a committee uh, are asking that council agree to the easement requested by Andrew Parks and direct staff to forward the letter including the minute with the Included with the minutes to the Department of Natural Resources. So we did put some conditions on allowing this, and it's uh, all outlined in the letter. So make that motion. And, uh, oops, sorry, should we have a second? Yeah, we have a second there. Oh, oh. Second. <laughs> second. I, I just wanted to know we, we neglected to include all the background, we neglected to include the letter, the draft letter, but it has gone out separately to you by yeah. email. So apologies that that wasn't in the package. Yeah. yeah, I meant to mention that that letter came through. But it had uh, the eighth on it, so that letter has not gone out yet. So. <laughs> Great. Okay. Any questions? Yeah, I do. Uh, I'm, I'm a bit surprised, I guess, that this of these people are appear to want a road down to the water, presumably to what launch a boat or. Um, no, he didn't seem to indicate that. He basically owns the part on the lake, and he owns the other part. Basically, he wants to have, be able to put an access so he can have access to the trail from his property on the side. So he wants, but he wants access across. He has no plans, and he realizes the restrictions on him doing anything with that land. And uh, the only thing that he can really put in there would be uh, canoe. Yeah. yeah. So it was clarified that the current regulations prohibit even the modification of vegetation mm -hmm. down from the trail to the lake. So there's really no way for him to build anything from the that. trail to the lake. So when Richard says a canoe, because he can portage it down into the lake, whatever. So our permission here has really nothing to do with no. whether he can access the lake itself, just to access the trail. And you'll see in the letter too that we also made him for requiring him to put in a culvert running alongside the trail for when he goes across it, so that this silk and stuff isn't going to run across and into the lake. <laughs> 
Uh, no, I was just going to second the motion. Okay. That was it. Uh, it's been moved and seconded, I believe. Uh, yeah. On the okay. question, all in favor? Motion is carried. Nothing mm -hmm. else in those minutes. Uh, Policy and Strategy Committee meeting me, draft minutes. Yeah, there are a couple of motions there that pertain to the uh, Climate and Environment Committee. Um, so, and following up the recommendations from the discussion of policy and strategy, I move that Council adopt the amended Community Greenhouse Gas Reduction Action Plan 2024 as presented. We have a second, uh, moved by Councillor Calva, seconded by Councillor Pini. On the question, all in favor? Motion is carried. And I'll go ahead to the next one. Again, on the recommendation of the Policy and Strategy Committee, I move that Council approve the extension of the Climate and Energy Program Manager, manager term position for an additional two years. We have a second, second by Councillor now. Any questions, comments? Question is two, two years from September, is, is that correct? Yeah, an additional two years would be from the current end date, which is in the fall. Yes. Should we specify that in the motion? I don't think so. I mean, I guess you know, it's, only, it's only for so somebody else yeah. reading it. I, I know what you mean. It uh, says an extension. So yeah. It has to start from the beginning. It just yeah, kind of, yeah. then you start to get into talking about the yeah. current person. Yeah. 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 On, on the motion, on the question, all in favor? <laughs> Opposed? Motion is carried. Um, do we have anything else on this? There's a couple more. There's 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 more. Uh, move that council defer the recommendation to host a facilitated intercommittee workshop until 2025. Moved by mm -hmm. Councillor Wilson, seconded by Councillor Feeney. On the question, all in favor? Motion is carried. Thank you. Next one. Um, I'll do the next one, then, the, uh, coming from the Policy and Strategy Committee. The recommendation, I'll move that council direct staff to develop a draft parking bylaw based on the maximum free parking signage option for consideration by the committee. All right, a second that. Seconded what, by may, I, Wilson. may I add maximum time free parking signage option? That's what it means. Excellent. I think that's a good addition. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maximum time, <laughs> maximum free. I'm curious. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. you okay with the amendment? <laughs> <laughs> so, move as amended. On the question, all in favor? Motion is carried. Highly productive meeting. Yeah. <laughs> Following up on that, a move that council direct staff to include estimated startup costs and annual revenues expenses associated with the introduction of time limited parking in the draft 24 25 budget. Moved by Councillor Calva, seconded by Councillor Now. On the question, all in favor? Motion is carried. Thank you. I think we're done with those minutes. Okay. We can move on to asset management committee meeting. Next. Okay. We have uh, we have a couple of um, issues arising from that. Uh, the first one, of course, is the. Uh, the notion of the town's asset management policy, it came to council and council deferred it back to the committee for further review and discussion. It came back to the committee and the committee unanimously, unanimously approved uh, the asset management policy as amended and the amended policy is attached to the document. And I would move that the asset management policy be amended as attached. We have a second for that. I'll second it. I'll second it by Councillor Calvo. Questions, comments? On the question, all in favor? Motion is carried. Thank you. 
And we're very fortunate that a, a member of our committee uh, who had been with us and had left the town of Mahone Bay has now returned. She saw the error of her ways and came back. <laughs> and she's agreed to come back as well to the uh, town's asset management committee. So I would move that council appoint Helga Baxter as a member of the town's asset management committee. Seconded by Councillor now on the question. All in favor? Motion's carried. Thank and, you. Uh, if I could just add, um, so Helga was also on the planning advisory committee, and just I didn't think it was appropriate to put this in the asset management committee's report, but she has also asked if she would be able to rejoin that committee. So while that could come separately, if we want it to come through the PAC, um, council could also make that motion here now. So just uh, up to you. If you want to let that go to PAC to be discussed at PAC next, or if you just want to say, well, let's put her on the PAC now. But I don't think we've replaced that position. Eric, we haven't replaced that position. Right? Okay. Okay. Move to appoint Helga on the PAC by yeah. Councillor Wilson, seconded by Councillor Carver. On the question, all in favor? Motion is carried. I think Helga would. Have any interest in the cemetery Thank you, Council. Uh, we don't have any new business. Uh, do you have any questions from folks who are watching? The YouTubers. Uh, uh... No questions there right now. Nine viewers. We were as high as 11 at one point. So. Good. Well, we'll give it a minute. Uh, yeah. I think we were, we were told last time we, we ended things very quickly. So we'll give it a minute and then uh, we can move on to the first session. Oh, and uh, I guess it's at council's option, but it was discussed if we wanted to add a piece to the closed session to add an additional subject. So just um, if you want to add that subject when you make well, that motion. Yeah, yeah, I just wanted to that we go into closed session to discuss uh, matters under the permitted under the MGA contract negotiations, acquisition, sale, lease, and security of municipal property and litigation. Moved we'll, we'll by Councillor Carver, the we'll second. Seconded second by Councillor Wilson. On the question, all in favor? Do we still have no questions on, uh, on that? No, you're clear. Oh, thank you, folks. Good night. All right. Now we're in a closed session, but we want to leave the lines open, right? Yeah, yeah. But I do need yeah. to just give me a moment. I'm just gonna let the washer while you go first. Take a number, take a number. Take uh ten.